Got it. Okay, good. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Joan and I'm the vice president of the Wilmette Public Library Board of Trustees. And it is now 633 and our meeting will now come to order. Um, Director Austin, could we have a roll call, please? Certainly. Um, Trustee McDonald is absent. Trustee Nealon. I am here. Trustee O'Keefe. Here. Trustee Riddle. Present. Trustee Summer. Here. And Trustee Fishman. I'm here. Thank you. Great. Wonderful. I'd like to now turn things over to Secretary Trustee O'Keefe, who will now um, our chief of the Wilmette Public Library Board of Trustees. If you look to attachment one um, of the agenda, there is a uh, certification of the membership of the Board of Trustees that sets forth all of the officials, their titles, as well as their terms. Um, would you like me to read that out loud so that's a part of the record or just making note of that? I'd say read that, thank you. Okay, I can do so. Uh, President Lisa McDonald, term of 2019 to 2023. Vice President Joan Fishman, 2019 to 2023 term. Secretary Marianne O'Keefe, term of 2021 to 2025. Treasurer Tracy Summer, term of 2021 to 2025. Trustee Patricia Nealon, term of 2021 to 2025. Trustee Fina Riddle, term of 2019 to 2023. And Trustee Stuart Wolf of term 2021 to 2023. This certification is effective September 21st, 2021. And at Very this good. time, if there's no questions as to that certification or attachment one, I would like to uh, provide the oath to Stuart Wolf. So. so if you'd like to stand, I know that's probably hard given that we are all on Zoom. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit up straight. How's that? Okay. <laughs> this is a and pseudo, get out of way a pseudo like, standing. Yeah. Okay, given yeah. that we're <laughs> okay. um, I, I will first read a little portion and then at that time, I'll ask you to repeat after me, please. Okay. This oath of office is in compliance with Illinois Library Laws and Rules, April 2015 edition, 75 ILCS 16 slash 30 dash 40. The oath of office for library trustee for the Wilmette Public Library District. And I'm going to, I'll read it. And then if you can repeat after me. Okay. I, Stuart Wolf. I, Stuart Wolf. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge, the duties of the Office of Library Trustee, the duties of the Office of the uh, library, library Trustee, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, Thank you so much. Sure, thank you. Okay. I'm excited to be back. <laughs> Welcome back, Stuart. Welcome back. Okay. Thank you so much, we're excited. Okay, so as a matter of procedure now, I'm going to call the roll again um, as we have a new trustee to recognize as being present at our meeting. So here is our, our roll call. Trustee McDonald is absent. Trustee Nealon. Here. Trustee O'Keefe? Here. Trustee Riddle? Here. Trustee Summer? Here. Trustee Wolf? Here. And Trustee Fishman? Here. Okay, we have a board. Wonderful. And we have a quorum, correct? Yes, we do. Very good. Thank you. Um, moving on, we now go to um, are there any public comments? Anyone who wishes to address the Wilmette Public Library District Board of Trustees may do so here. Any, 
And you can raise your hand or you can unmute if you would like to speak. At this time, I do also want to recognize that we are joined on this call by a number of um, members of the staff and some guests. Um, I see Sarah Beth Brown, Kim Hagland, Marty Belfontaine, Jessica Thompson, Gail Justman, Andrea Vaughn Johnson, Jennifer Bartell, Patsy Devono, John Risco, and Marcos Levy from the library. I also see Elizabeth Seeger um, representing the League of Women Voters, and we also have another guest on our call as well. Um, so if anyone would like to speak, um, please do raise your hand or unmute and address the board. Otherwise, we will move on with the agenda. All right, um, hearing no public comments, we now will move on to the review of the draft of the minutes. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes from August 17th, 2021? I do have a comment. Um, the, uh, the minutes that we um, presented for you all here, while technically correct, um, uh, the statute states that um, an appointed trustee's role begins on the third Monday after their appointment. And you'll note that um, in the minutes um, in the section where we um, appointed uh, Trustee Wolf to, to his role. Uh, we stated that his, his role would begin on September 20th, 2021. Um, today is the 21st, and since um, he did in fact uh, be sworn in today, um, I think that we should update the minutes to reflect September 21 instead of September 20. Um, so that is a correction that I would make, and that's the only other item that I had for the minutes. Does anyone else have anything else? Okay, do we All have right. a motion? Hearing none, right. May we have a motion with the correction as stated by Director Austin? Also a motion that we make that correction. And is there a second, please? A second. Trustee Nealon. We had a motion by Trustee Wolf and a second by Trustee Nealon. All right, may we have the roll call, please, Dr. Austin? Certainly. Thank you. Uh, Trustee McDonald is absent. Trustee Nealon? Yes. Trustee O'Keefe? Yes. Trustee Riddle? Yes. Trustee Summer? Yes. And Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee Fishman? Yes. Thank you. Motion passed. Moving on, Trustee Summer, may we have the treasurer's report, please? Yes, you may. Uh, good evening. I um, have read and reviewed the financial statements, the documents prepared by John Risco. I read the notes, the financial reports, the financial statements, and the check details. And I have a few comments after my review and talk to my discussion with John and Anthony. Um, and then if anybody has any questions when I'm done on things I haven't covered, please feel free to ask. A grant income, which 40, account number 45, 000 represents a per capita grant that we received and it was six thousand dollars more than budgeted this is likely the only grant that we're going to receive and we got more than we anticipated which was very good news um in you if you'll notice in the sorry the uh financial the report part the expected two-month rate is about 16.67 percent so there's a couple items, personnel, which is 61,000, and building maintenance, which is 76,350. They are slightly over the rate, but we had an extra payroll last month. And as for building maintenance, we had some contract, we pay some contracts monthly, some annually. And in discussion with both uh, Anthony and John, both believe that we will stay within budget for the year for those items. Uh, and then my last comment is, if you look within the checks, there was a $200 check from the general fund checking account for a Rutherford Trust expense. I didn't know this, but fun, the funds are all commingled in a MacSafe account, and um, that expense is processed as a journal entry. So it might look like it's going through as a regular expense, but it really is appropriately expensed under the Rutherford Trust. Uh, does anybody have any questions on any items, checks, anything that I did not cover? Trustee uh, Summer, when you mentioned that six thousand dollars grant, yes. um, surprise. 
Where was that from? Um, it's called a per capital grant and perhaps Anthony can further explain that. <laughs> Certainly. Um, so the per capita grant is um, one of the, um, the outcomes of our application for, well, we apply for it annually. Um, and the um, Illinois Public Library annual report that we approved at last month's meeting, the IPLAR, is one of the conditions that we need to satisfy in order to apply for this grant. Um, the per capita grant uh, um, basically allocates certain dollars per capita in our community um, to provide um, an additional um, funding of services for our community. It's something that comes from the state and it has federal origins through the LSTA. Uh, so we apply for this on an annual basis. And um, this is the first time that we've seen a, a fairly significant increase um, in the per capita grant funding in quite some time. So while it is true that we, we did budget for it and we anticipated that we would receive it because we satisfied all the requirements that would be necessary to receive it, we didn't know that there was going to be this much of an increase. Um, and we can thank our legislators in Springfield for making that happen for us. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Appreciate that. Are there any other questions from anybody? All right, uh, I move to approve the bills and salary check detail for August 2021. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Th Trustee Summer has motion to approve and Trustee Riddle a second. May we have a roll call please? Certainly. Trustee Nealon, or I'm sorry, Trustee McDonald is absent. Trustee Nealon? Yes. Trustee O'Keefe? Yes. Trustee Riddle? Yes. Trustee Summer? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee Fishman? Yes. Thank you. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, I'll now defer to uh, Director Austin, and he will introduce our presentations of the um, Summer Reading Club about that and the um, library's new website. Great, thank you, thank, thank you so much. Um, so as, um, as President McDonald mentioned last month, as part of our plans to um, prepare for the strategic plan this coming spring, um, we're gonna be devoting some time at each of our board meetings going forward for presentations from managers on our leadership team uh, to share um, program updates, status updates on what's happening in their departments, as well as anticipating trends uh, that we want to keep in mind when we begin drafting the next version of our strategic plan in the spring. Um, so um, our first manager who's going to be leading us through the orientation this evening is um, Andrea Von Johnson, our youth services manager, and she's going to provide a summary of our summer reading club um, for this past year, as well as provide an update on some of the activities that are going on in our youth services department right now. So Andrea, welcome and uh, thank you so much for your report. Thank you. It's great to see everybody again. Uh, so after a very tumultuous year, um, we found new ways to provide programming and services to our families. In June, we saw a return to in-person programs um, after a long time and it felt fantastic to see the families in person in our programs again. Um, we conducted many programs on the library lawn. Uh, we painted circles on the lawn for story time to encourage social distancing. We purchased and learned how to use a new PA system with Bluetooth headsets because it's uh, really hard to be heard over all the traffic noise on our corner. And uh, we adapted how we present story time and programs um, for social distancing and for, for the noise and um, to make everything work smoothly and safely outside. And it's been going really well. And, and really well received by the patrons. Um, some of the families with the younger babies and toddlers have expressed so much appreciation because it's the first organized activity their toddler or baby has ever attended. You know, um, so we're keeping that going. Um, we kept it going through the summer, and we're keeping that going through the end of October um, until it just gets too cold, and and um, and we're enjoying that a lot. Um, this month we offered our first indoor programs in a long time for um, school aged children um, with limited capacity and social distancing in our auditorium. So we're doing a couple of book clubs, um, some STEM programs, some art programs, and our reading to dogs program will also be in the auditorium. 
um, summer reading club looked more like a, a normal summer in youth services this year, which felt really good. Um, we brought back um, in-person reporting. Um, kids were reporting online for Winter Reading Club and Summer Reading Club 2020. Um, so it was great to have see the kids running in um, to report their reading in person. A lot of the reporting happened outside at a summer reading booth that we put together with the book bike outside for patrons who felt more comfortable um, with that. Um, kids read for 20 days and they mark their reading on a reading log and then they come running in to show us their reading log and um, talk with us about what they've been reading, what their favorite books were, and then they get to choose um, a free book. Patrons who were not comfortable um, coming inside the library or seeing us in person at all could um, report remotely through an online form and pick up their prize books through parking lot pickup. Um, but we had very few patrons um, opt for that. Most of the families came in in person, either outside or, or inside um, the children's library. Um, we had 2,000 kids take reading logs, and nearly 700 of them um, completed their 20 days of reading, and they chose um, a free book. 255 of those kids went on to read another 20 days and get another free book, and we had 80 kids going on to read for 60 days over the summer, and they were able to um, collect a, choose a, a third book. So thanks to the generosity of the friends, we were able to purchase a wide selection of high interest paperback books for the kids of all ages, and we gave away 1,029 books uh, over the summer. It was a lot of fun for us too. Um, every little step we take back to normal um, feels really good for the community and for the patrons as well, I think. Um, also, we did something new over the summer. Instead of giving out um, little toys or pencils at the halfway mark on the reading log, we let the kids vote in a silly vote um, that we called the Big Library Takeover. And the kids chose who would be working at the library for a silly weekend in September, um, superheroes, dinosaurs, or unicorns. Unicorns won the vote. And if you came to the library last weekend, you might have seen some unicorns working at the library, at the welcome desk, at the circulation desk, shelving books. Um, working at the reference desk in the computer lab. A um, lot of staff dressed up um, like unicorns. Um, we had some full body costumes. We had some funny headgear. We had unicorn name tag. Um, I had a costume performer come in and tell stories about unicorns to the kids and pose for pictures. Um, the families were just delighted and it was the most fun that we've had in a long time. Um, it felt really good. Um, some new stuff that um, we're working on now this fall are um, a new way to offer um, school cards to um, public school teachers and preschool teachers. Um, we used to have something called a teacher sticker that, that teachers could put on their personal card, um, but we are now offering um, new library accounts to the schools that will be in the school's name, preschools and K-8 teachers um, with K-8 schools, the principals can sign up for an account with the library and they provide us with the names of the teachers who are going to use the accounts. And we will um, have them get in touch with us to, we can help them select materials for their classroom and they can borrow the materials on the school account. Um, so that's something we've just invited the schools to do and got a great enthusiastic response um, so far. Um, so we're really glad to, to offer service to the teachers in a, in a new way. Um, something else that we're working on is expanding how we offer maker programming in the library. That's been harder to do because it's not, not um, you know, it's, it's not as easy to do that over Zoom um, or in a video um, because you want to be using our maker equipment. Um, we have been doing 3D printing program virtual, virtually and those have gone really well um, because the patrons are designing um, their 3D printed items um, with Tinkercad over the computer, and we're pretty, pretty. Uh, it's pretty, pretty crazy. You can um, support them pretty well through Zoom on designing their 3D prints, and they can come in and pick them up up at the library. Um, but we get a lot of questions about the 3D printer, and can can I bring my own design, or what other maker equipment do you have? Um, so um, maker librarian Janet Peel is working on something she's going to call uh, maker appointments where she has um, households or single patrons come in and um, get some dedicated time with Janet 
or another maker librarian and the equipment. Um, we have several pieces of equipment besides the 3D printer. Uh, we also we just purchased um, three sewing machines, which the staff are learning to use so that we can present them in programs for patrons to come in and use. And also we can circulate them as part of our um, library of things. Um, and this is Maker, it's just been so popular and we're really excited to be bringing that back in new ways. And it just attracts, you know, multiple generations. Um, so we're just really glad to be doing um, more maker stuff in addition to like the maker stuff that we've been offering um, on the lawn and, and virtually. Um, and what else is going on? Our book selectors are um, throughout the year and even, you know, before the pandemic, we're working on um, diversifying the collection, seeking out new authors, making sure that, you know, the whole community is represented in our collection. Um, we've also been working on updating our print bibliographies that we hand out to people to make sure that they reflect the diversity of the community and that there is a good percentage of own voices authors on our book list. Um, that's something that's been a priority for us in the past year as well. Um, and that's you know going to be an ongoing um, focus: um, equity, diversity, inclusion through you know all the services and and work that we do. So yeah, it's it's, uh, it's been a tough time, but also a really exciting time. And I'm really proud of my team for you know still bringing creative ideas forward um, and just you know keeping their spirits up and just presenting programs in new ways. Um, and, and figuring out how to, to keep serving the family through this time. Do you all, thank you so much, Andrea. Do you all have any questions for Andrea about her report or the activities of what's going on in youth services? I just wanted to say, I love the unicorn day uh, activity a ton because I had been thinking um, that, you know, the getting little tchotchkes and stuff like maybe it wasn't so environmentally great or, you know, maybe, you know, kids lose things right away, but that is just such a wonderful creative idea. So thanks for that. Thank you. I, I loved, I walked by, I almost did a double take of the little statue out front on the bench with the cute little uh, headdress or whatever. Mm -hmm. So very clever, very cute. Thank you. I do have another question. I know how popular um, the Maker Fest funded by Friends has been in the past. Is that um, coming back? Will that be another festival of Maker Fest? Well, what do you think, Anthony? We haven't discussed Maker Fest. It usually would happen in late February. Um, I think we're still hesitant to like encourage, you know, to encourage crowds in the building. Mm -hmm. At the unicorn event was the first event um, that we've tried since COVID. And, you know, some families came in and really had a great time, but we didn't get the large capacity kind of crowding that we get at Make the Fest. Yeah. Um, it's a tough question. I'd like, you know, I'd like to see how cases are in the area. And that's something I would discuss with Anthony. Okay. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is how museums these days have, have a timed uh, reservation almost. Mm -hmm. It's maybe something to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A timed entrance, I should say. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, Andrew, I have a, I have a question. It seems like you had a great success with the book um, clubs. How does it compare to prior years? Not last year, but you know, in some of the years past. Oh, sure. Yeah, I actually I have my spreadsheet open from from previous years. So yeah, I'm thinking a typical year. So 2019, we had um, 951 kids finish, meaning complete one log. Um, so yeah, we had about almost 700. We had 694 kids finish one log. Um, this year. Um, overall, I feel like traffic and new services is generally been lower um, during COVID. So um, yeah, not too far off from a normal summer where it would be packed in here. I think it's great. And I loved, I loved seeing the, the person outside as a great alternative for people to be able to report. 
and for people that weren't comfortable coming into the building, particularly with kids are vaccinated. So that, that was a great, a really great alternative. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're trying to uh, accommodate different levels, people's different comfort levels. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Good speaking with you all. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for your report, Andrea. Um, our next uh, presentation this evening is from our communications and events manager, Sarah Beth Brown. Welcome, Sarah Beth. Um, Sarah Beth's big project this year um, is one that, that um, is of interest to all of us, and this is the renovation of our website. So we're in the, in the phase of uh, full redesign of our page, and Sarah Beth's here to tell us all about um, the genesis of that process, um, how we've gone through it, and um, where we are. And she's going to give us a, a, present, a demo as well. So take it away, Sarah Beth. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm going to quickly share my screen. Um, it takes usually takes a moment. So here we go. All right. Can y'all see that? Okay. I'm going to size it so that I can see it as well. Um, okay, I'm Sarah Beth Brown. As Anthony said, I am the um, communications and events manager here at the library. Um, I've been working on the website for years. Um, over the past year, um, since COVID happened, um, and the website was such a part of our communications plan, I've been very involved with it. Um, when we started this um, new project, in the winter, I was on the committee. And when Stephen Koble left over the summer, um, I took over the management of the committee and will be overseeing the website uh, going forward. The great news is we have had an absolutely amazing dynamic committee who have been working on building this site. And the great part about this site is it is really sort of built by a lot of people and maintained by a lot of people. So that committee will continue to work on it as fits with their work, and so will a large number of other staff members in the building. Um, one of the things that is the most exciting about this website is it's very dynamic. It is really easy to add content, change content, um, update content. If you update something in one place, it will update all over the site. It's almost magical. When I make a change to one page and see it reflected throughout other pages, I'm just thrilled and in a very nerdy, um, I'm learning about websites kind of way. Um, so as you can see, this is our new site. Um, it is got a lot of white space. It's bright. It's clean. That's something we were going for. We wanted you to feel like it was really bright and dynamic and friendly. Um, we are maintaining our branding. We really love our colors, our logo. We've updated them a little bit and our design team um, uh, brought in this blue color to help ground our website. So you'll see that it's a website specific color. We haven't used it before, but you'll see it throughout the site. And we think it's a really good complement to the site, um, to our colors. Um, so this right here is our homepage, um, sort of the meat and potatoes. This is what most people are going to see when they come visit our site. Um, and it's got a lot more going on than our old site. It's really exciting. We took a look at what patrons asked about, at what staff new patrons were doing, and also at our numbers, at the pages that were really popular. And we tried to get all of those pieces featured on this site. Um, I'm going to come back to our menu in a few minutes and just take you through a little bit of the um, homepage itself. We've got a slideshow. Um, and this is where you're gonna find news, events. Um, they change, we're, we're, we're gonna change it a lot. Um, so sometimes it'll have programs, reading clubs, one book everyone reads, um, as well as some things like some of our online resources that may not get, you know, um, that we wanna be promoting to patrons. We've also got these six quick links right here. Um, these are our hot hits. We know what people are coming to the website for. Um, these six links are right up there at the top of the list. And if you are just coming here, you don't want to have to search. You don't want to have to navigate. You just want to get a card, find story time, um, make a parking lot pickup appointment. We've got these right here for you. 
Um, going down a little bit, we have some information blocks. These are evergreen content. They will rotate occasionally for resources, um, things like staff blogs. Um, if we had a change to our service model again, we could put it there and people would be able to easily access it. Things that we just want you to know, um, easily find, maybe promote a little bit. And then we've got some fun stuff. We have our calendar. Um, this is um, you know, it's, it's live, it's updated frequently, and um, they helped us frame it in a way that makes it blend seamlessly with our site. That was really exciting. Um, they, the design team that we worked with happened to have another client who was using the same calendar that we use. So it was a good opportunity for them to um, figure out a way to make it really integrate with the site. Um, and you'll see it over and over throughout our site. We have different calendar views um, and I'll show you some more pages in a few minutes. Um, and this is one of my favorite parts of our website. Um, this right here, this new items is what we are calling a book river. Um, it's a little list of books. Uh, if you click on one, it takes you directly to our catalog and a search with that item in it. Um, we know after the past 18 months, how much our patrons love getting um, reader's advisory and book recommendations delivered to them. You know, if you come into the library, you can browse the shelves. But if you are at home, as many of us have been, it's a lot harder to find popular books, new books, what our librarians are recommending. Um, and this just builds it in seamlessly. This is another piece of what we call dynamic content that you're going to see over and over again. We have them in all different themes for all different age groups. Um, down here at the bottom of our page, we've got a subscribe button, stay in touch via email. We send out emails every week. Um, sometimes two or three different interest groups will get an email in the same week. So this gives people a really easy opportunity to sign up. And then down here in the bottom, we've got some business. Um, we know people are used to looking at things for things like contact us, employment, board information in a footer. So we've made that really easy. Um, down here, chat with a librarian that takes you to a little widget. If our librarians, if the library is open, you'll get a live chat with the librarian. Otherwise, it'll send an email. So we're going to navigate back up to the top and go through a little bit about the different types of content. Um, you can see up here, we've got a couple of different menus. Here's one with our hours right up top, um, which I love. It makes it super simple to find. Um, and then my account will take you to our library catalog um, and you can log in. So here's our main navigational menu. We spent a lot of time working on thinking about how people wanted to get around our site and what they wanted to look for the most. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different pages that really stand out to how we are able to use these tools with our new site. So we're gonna go right here to eBooks and audiobooks. This takes you to a list of all of the online resources we have that have downloadable content. Um, you can see here download and streaming. So once you're here, if you see, oh, you know, I'd love to see some local history, you can apply and you're going to get some local history resources in there as well. So you can slice and dice our content however you want. We can slice and dice our content however we want. And then, you know, take this exact um, page and we can share it in an email newsletter. We can put it on Facebook. We can make it a link on, on our home page. So it's really easy to get the exact, you know, sorting of our online databases um, and make them available to patrons. This is something we've talked about for a really long time, how to make our online resources um, which are popular and a big investment, you know, it's a huge part of our collection. How do we make them more approachable? It's been really static historically, and this really makes it more dynamic and more easy to work with. So you'll see another way that these um, online resources come up is with our research. This, this page is going to look similar. It's got everything. All of our resources are right here. So you can see some of them um, have more information. You can go straight to the source. 
Some of them are available in library only. It just depends on, you know, um, what the resource is, but this gives you everything. And again, you can search and you can filter by your interest. We have a few filtered lists pre-made, and then we have some special topics, um, some special research topics as well. You can see our genealogy page um, has got different resources, websites. You can see these resources again, right down here. This is a different way that we've inserted that dynamic content into the page. Um, and then some external links to local sources. So it's really graphic. It's really easy to find. It's not too text heavy. There's a lot of bright white. Um, and then we're gonna keep moving. We've got calendars. This will take you to our standard calendar. We're not changing that. Um, it's been really successful and, and we're used to, you know, patrons are used to using, to signing up that way. Um, and we have some special interest pages here. So if you wanna learn about our book clubs, these are our upcoming book groups um, and these are blog posts. So you can click here. It's gonna take you to an upcoming book discussion. You can learn what we're doing um, for the for our upcoming book groups. So that's been a really easy way to like quickly update, update text. Um, and a lot of different staff members are able to add this content. So the librarian who runs our book groups, she's able to add this content. And you know, when she's ready to update it, she can update it. Um, it's really seamless and not very much friction um, for getting staff to maintain their pages. We also have services. This is a huge part of what the website is for, that information about what you can do here at the library. Um, we have landing pages now for our various different interest groups. So this is something we really wanted on this site. It was a huge priority for us. Before our kids and families information had been diffused across the site, our teen information had been diffused across the site. If you just wanted to see what was happening for teens at the library, it was really tricky. Um, but now we have these really beautiful pages. Um, the kids and family one is, is just such a, it's got these quick hits right here. Again, you can see we've got another calendar. You can see those widgets coming up again. Um, here's those blog posts, um, another book river. So you can see how those pieces are used over and over on the site. And then down here, more of those resources. So we can easily build pages using sort of building blocks. And then of course we've got, you know, I just moved to town, gonna get a card, really easy. We've got a big, um, and then a fun feature that I love. Um, this could be a super text heavy page because there's all different kinds of cards and everyone has slightly different requirements. So what we have are these nice FAQ drop downs. So if, if you're looking for an adult library card, you can tap it and that's all you need. Um, you're not going through a bunch of different, you know, sorting and filtering and trying to figure it out. You're just seeing the information that you need. Um, so that is, and then we've got about us. We've got quite a lot of um, information about the library. We worked really hard to organize this in a way that we thought would be intuitive for patrons visiting the library. So about the, about the library, we'll, we'll visit that page. We've got all different kinds of information. We've got our mission, our vision, our strategic plan, our EDI commitment, our annual reports. Um, we've got six years worth of annual reports. We've got our library value calculator. We've got a finance page. Um, so all of this information easy to update, easy to link together. Um, and it's all in one place. And that's something we really tried to do was sort of coordinate the information so that it was easily findable. And that's, you know, you'll find that again and again. It's the same thing we did with that kids and family page, the teen page. We really worked hard on saying this information goes together and building a page out that would make sense. Um, so I think that's sort of the highlights 
Oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. I have one more thing. And that's our search bar. I love this part of our site. We don't talk about it much, um, but it's on every page. Um, I think that that we've never had that before. Our old search bar was on our homepage. And then when you navigated away, it was gone. But if you wanted to, you know, if you were reading um, a blog post and it reminded you of a book, you're right there. You can search our catalog right there for that book. Or if you're on a page and you thought you would be able to find, you know, some finance information or some project information and it wasn't there, you can just toggle over and search our website. Um, and I think that that immediacy of search um, makes it a lot more nimble and just a lot more user friendly. So that's one last piece I wanted to share with y'all. Um, so that was a very fast overview, um, but I would love to take questions if y'all have anything. And I can poke around and show more pages or, or anything like that as well. I don't have any questions, Sarah, but this is excellent and I can't wait to poke around too. And um, it looks just great. So congratulations to your team. And Oh, thank you. They've done, they've done amazing work. And we're going to be doing some user testing and sharing it with some, a select group of staff in the community in the next week to 10 days. Um, and so y'all will be able to see the, the site more completely as well. Very when is the official or, or goal to launch the website? Sure. So our goal to launch is October 5th. Um, that's a Tuesday. It's in about two weeks. So, and we are, the content is there. We um, have built our, those two weeks to give us time to make sure we can do some user testing, which is really important to us. Well, great. I love the section where you could get to Ancestry.com and New York Times. And I think that's very um, just user friendly. So um, thank you for that. That I really, just looking at it right now, um, very excited to explore that. Oh, good. Yeah, we we really are. I love those pages because I'm I'm a, I use it as a patron. You know, I'm not on the floor with the librarians, and and that's how I like to access it. So, I, I, maybe this was part of your goal, Sarah. But um, but, I, but I think also that the, obviously the website's more dynamic. But it also seems like um, even though I think it's going to be easier for someone to get onto the website and get off the website if they're just going on quickly, you've also made it more sticky. I think you've made it, you know, so I think it's, it's a great, it's however, however that, that came together, it's just a great combination of, of user friendliness, but also engagement. So well, that, that's great. Yeah, we're hoping there'll be some good stuff that people can just find their way around and enjoy reading and, and checking out. So. Yeah, so. And, and my question is analytics, will you, is it all built in that you monitor all the, uh, the usage? Mm -hmm. So we we use Google Analytics. We used it on our old site, and um, we will begin track as soon as this goes live on the fifth. We'll be tracking it on this site. So we just once you make the switch, so does the Google Analytics. So great, yeah. Um, I have a question. Some of those things said in library only, mm -hmm. like like the ancestry.com, does that mean you come in, I've never used them. You would come in and use like a library computer for that or is there, a, okay. Yes, I think you can use your computer. Anthony, correct me if I'm wrong, um, okay. but it has to be on our um, web. Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's IP based and a lot of that is that they need to protect how many users can have simultaneous access to it. It's something that the vendor sets as a, a contractual obligation for us to to not offer it up any other way than just within the library. So, yeah. Uh, maybe because I had that same question, particularly when I saw something about Cooks Illustrated and some of the cooking things. Um, could you put a little disclaimer on that? Somehow lightly worded of what that means, because I I think that's a little confusing. What that means in person only, or something like that. Um, in library only is, um, and I think it will tell you when you click on it. Well, it's going to let me do it because I'm here. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do believe that you get that you get information when you try to click on it. Okay. 
America's Test Kitchen, yeah. Because they charge, for, I see what you mean, because I use, I've used that and they do charge, certainly, so I understand why it would be limited. So if, I, I had mentioned to you when I got my picture taken about being someone that did like test running, test, helping to test it. Mm -hmm. We need to come into the library to do that, or is that something you can set us up for? Because I, I would love to run through this. Like I think um, Joan's question about clarifying what view in, like I now know what it means, but if I was at home, I'd love to just work, pl play with it a little bit. Sure. So that, um, this is a long standing aspect of our, of our website. Um, so we are, our questions, you know, we are looking at how you can find the resources. Uh, but you can do it from home um, because we know, you know, the in-house versus, um, you know, at home use. Um, but we'd certainly, you know, if you found it confusing, we would want to know that. So if you want to do some of that user testing and, and give us that feedback, that would be great. Um, and we can, you know, see how, how we would be able to tweak our messaging on that. But, I, but please clarify, because I'm sure, I'm still not sure. To tra uh, Tracy's question, um, those like beta users do have to be in the library no. or no? No, okay. no. We 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 are looking more for navigational um, testing. So we we know the sources that work here at, versus work at home. Um, if you were one of our testers at home and found it confusing that you weren't able to access a resource. We would want to know that, and we have, you know, we have questions okay. about what you think is is not, not working. Um, but that's, you know, that's not the main goal of that testing. It's primarily to see if you can get where you're going. Okay, got it. And how are you going to identify those testers? We asked for volunteers um, in a recent email. Um, they were people who do read our emails, so we think that they are somewhat engaged with us. Um, and we got a good response. Um, and so we're hoping to get to get a good percentage of them to reply. Okay. And we are okay. very so, lucky, so, so, one of our, oh, I'm sorry. So I should email you to tell you I'm interested in being an attached. Sure. Yes, you gotcha. totally, that would be great. Um, we're very lucky one of our committee members actually has some, has training in doing um, sort of UX user testing. Um, and he has taken the lead with this um, John Amundsen in our adult services department. Um, he's helped, he has built those surveys um, and they're, they're great. I think, I think we're gonna get really good feedback. So he's done a great job. Thank you. Any other questions for Sarah Beth? Great, very exciting. Thank you very much. We're all, thank y'all and uh, stay tuned. It'll be, it'll be live in a few weeks, so. Hope it goes smoothly. <laughs> Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you, Sarah Beth. Bye. Great. Um, moving on then to action items. And um, we have resolution 2021-22-208, honoring um, Trustee Jan Barshus. And I'd like to quickly read this. So whereas Jan Barshus was elected to the Wilmette Public Library Board of Trustees in April 2011, and has served for 10 years. And whereas Jan's interest in the library has been evidenced in numerous areas, including her active participation on various board committees, such as the Community Connections, Facilities and Equipment, Nominating and Policy Committees, as well as serving as Secretary. And whereas Jan regularly advocated for environmental initiatives, emerging technologies, such as the library's hybrid electric vehicle, composting and the pollinator garden. And she and her husband practiced what they preached by recycling the discarded donated books from books down under. And whereas Jan's thoughtful, inspirational and caring demeanor and acknowledgement of staff has been known and appreciated by her fellow board members. And whereas the board deeply appreciates Jen's loyal service as a board member as an effective voice supporting the essential role of the public library in the community. It is therefore resolved and for the reasons enumerated and for other quantities too numerous to recount, the board thanks Jan Barshus for her service and acknowledges that her presence on the board will be greatly missed. 
and further resolve that the president of the board or vice president also is authorized to present resolution number 2021-22-208 to Jan Barshas. Is there a motion to accept the resolution? I am very honored to uh, to move to approve this, this resolution. Thank you, Trustee Will. A second? I will go ahead and second it. Also honored. Thank you, Trustee Neal. Anthony, do we need a roll call for this? Or do we have a voice vote? Yep, we can. We'll do a roll call. Okay. All right. So, Trustee McDonald is absent. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle. Yes. Trustee Summer. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. And Trustee Fishman. Yes. Motion is passed. Thank you, everyone. Um, Director Austin, now we have our discussion items of the Capital Repair, Repair Project update. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you so much. Um, well, we are in the home stretch. Um, we've got a lot of the major work of our 2021 Capital Repair Project behind us. Um, we are approaching the, the one year mark for our, our landmark for getting this project underway. Began with a lot of planning and discussion uh, last summer with the receipt of the 2020 Capital Reserve Study, which then informed the direction that we gave to Ingberg Anderson, our architects who went through and made the determinations for the type of work that we needed to do. We then engaged with Shales McNutt Construction, who are our construction managers on the project, helped us to put together the bid package. And then, um, you know, we went through our, our, our routines with uh, bidding out the various uh, trades for the project, and then we commenced in the spring. Um, so we've been at this for quite some time, and the majority of the work is behind us. So what I want to do is give you an update on, on where we stand today and talk about what some of the items are that are remaining for us and get into some of the budget details. So in terms of the timeline for where we're at right now, the masonry and tuck pointing portion of the project is complete. Um, the very remaining piece of that that was completed here just a, a week or so ago um, was uh, the removal of the temporary power service, which was installed on the north side of the building during our closure in August. They did have to bore into the, uh, the brick a little bit to mount that system. And so the tuck pointer um, was diligent, having already basically finished the, the scope of their project and came back and used their mortar to fill in uh, some of those uh, joints that were upset by that uh, particular process. So really satisfied with the results of the masonry uh, portion of the project, and that's complete. Uh, the roofing work is complete. Um, we're just waiting for um, the validation of the warranties, um, which are being renewed as a result of the recoding of the roof that we did with this project. Um, the lower level drain tile project is complete. Um, and there's a, a picture of the result of that in my director's report, and I'll get to that here in a moment. Uh, the security camera and access control systems um, are largely uh, at a point of substantial completion at this point. Uh, the cabling and hardware has been installed. Um, the training and finish work is estimated to be completed by the end of this, this month. Um, we did do a little bit of light training today, but I anticipate that we were going to have a little bit more of that going forward. Um, so we're getting very near the end with that. Um, as I said before, the access control is a new key management system that the library is using. Um, we're not going to be using um, hard keys for a lot of our spaces as we have in the past. We're going to be using a FOB system going forward that will give us more flexibility for uh, maintaining and controlling um, which spaces get accessed and by whom. So we're looking forward to the introduction of that system. Um, the fire alarm system is one of the elements of the project that has been unfortunately affected by the supply chain issues um, that have gone through a lot of the construction trades um, during this COVID time. So um, the fire alarm system, there, there are some components in the, uh, the equipment that I think have some chips or whatnot that were not able to be produced um, uh, to meet our deadlines. So that portion of the project is likely, likely gonna have a long tail. We don't know when we're gonna receive the, the finishing uh, elements of that. If you've been in the library over the course of the last uh, month or so, you've probably seen some red cables hanging from the ceiling in, in various places. Uh, these red cables are part of that supplementary audio portion of the fire alarm system. That's the upgrade of the system that we, uh, um, are, are installing to be in compliance with code. Um, the existing system still works, so we are not without a fire alarm system. It's just that this uh, element of the system is not complete. So as soon as that is ready, likely in November, um, that portion of the project will be complete and we can do the closeout 
and um, uh, punch list items on the on that system. Um, so we'll keep you we'll keep you updated on that. The main portion of the project in um, August was our electrical uh, main electrical power distribution system. And that element is complete. Uh, that's what enabled us to be able to reopen um, on September 1. And I'll get into those details here in a moment, but that was a major portion of this project. And uh, we were thrilled that that was completed um, to our satisfaction. Uh, there was also a lot of interior electrical work that was done with the actual distribution of the main power, upgrading a number of panels, consolidating them, and removing as much, if not every last element of the cloth wire that was in this building um, for safety purposes. So um, really dug out a lot of that um, equipment that has been with this building for, well, 70 years or more since 1951, um, when this uh, uh, portion of the building was constructed, um, we, did, we did a full upgrade of the electrical system. So we're, we're thrilled to have that complete. And then the final element is the first thing that you see when you come in, and that is our parking lot. So uh, the drive lanes have been restored. Um, all of the, uh, the pits have been removed. We've restriped. We've replaced a bunch of broken bricks. And we've got a plan for how we're going to manage uh, the parking lot going forward. So um, that's kind of the status of the project and where we're at right now and what's lingering. Um, as I mentioned, we had an awful lot of work that we did um, during that August time frame. Uh, there were members of our facility team who were here every hour that the construction workers were here to keep an eye on the building um, and to, to maintain operations at least on site during that time frame and to ensure that our temporary power was up and running for everyone who was working remotely. So kudos to our facilities team for doing double duty and especially during those incredibly hot days in August when uh, the construction crew and staff were, were taking care of our building. Um, so we got it done on time. Um, and um, the systems came back online just as we anticipated them to on August 30th. We restored um, the HVAC systems. And then the following day, staff came back in the building and we plugged in everything. We had unplugged every item that was plugged into an outlet before we closed. And we got everything back up and running on that Tuesday, tested our systems. Um, received a lot of deliveries. There was a lot of work that was being done while we were closed, and we received all of those deliveries there on that Tuesday and Wednesday, and then uh, set about the process of, of getting all of those materials um, processed, and uh, we reopened to the public as planned on, uh, on Wednesday, September 1. Um, so uh, that, I mean, I, I just kind of spat all that out as though it was nothing. It was a big deal. There was, there was a lot of work that got done there. Um, I'm happy to address any questions that you may have about the project there, but I think um, I did send along um, a budget document to give you a snapshot of where we are on the project. And the, the bottom line is that um, we are essentially on schedule and under budget for the project right now. Um, we did give ourselves um, ample allowance and some contingency. And as it stands at the moment, we've got about $53,000 left in our allowance on the project. And in terms of contingencies, uh, there were a few things that we ended up adding as, um, as change orders on this project because we had an opportunity cost. Um, you may know that um, when, we, when we signed all of our, our contracts with our vendors earlier this, um, this spring, uh, that the cost of labor for, well, the, it's not necessarily the labor, it's the materials that I'm talking about here. Uh, the cost of materials, you may have heard that the construction industry was really hit by the cost of lumber um, and some other commodities had shifts as well. Um, but our, 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 our contractors were locked into the pricing that they had approved back at, in spring. And so we had these, we had these uh, contractors on site, we had these electricians here. Um, when they started opening up some of the boxes, breaker panels, et cetera, um, digging out the channels, removing all the dead uh, cabling and, and whatnot, they would discover some things, things that we didn't, that we would not have been able to anticipate had we not been going in and looking at all of that. I'm really grateful for um, our, our diligent construction manager, um, Jason Perkunis. He, um, he was really a great advocate for the library. He recognized a lot of opportunities for us. He said, look, you've got the crew here. Um, you know, you could bid this out again and, and do another project in a year or so to try to, you know, clean up some of these things. But you've got a guy here and he's happy to do it right now. We can put through a change order and we can have this work done concurrent with this current project and you can be done with this. And so we did. 
Um, so we knew that we're going to be installing an upgraded Wi-Fi system this year. And so while we were dragging all of the, the data cables around the building, we added another run for all of those Wi-Fi access points. And that was just kind of an example of some of the things that we were able to add as part of the, the change orders um, that allowed us to take advantage of the team that was working with us and some of the materials that were already on site in many cases, some of the things that we had already paid for. So that's kind of the nature of, of some of the work that we that we were able to take care of through contingency. Um, we've done some additional patching and painting um, in some areas, um, some of the finished work we've been able to clean up. Um, uh, but most everything was related to the electrical project. I mean, there was a lot of things that we discovered uh, once the walls were opened up and those panels um, when we were cleaning them up, that we found some opportunity to do some changes there. So um, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have about the construction project um, as it stands today. It is what it is, right? It's overwhelming. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's all we can say, you and the crew. It's, um, I think we all sleep better also knowing that the so much safer inside the building. Thank you. Yes. I mean, the, obviously, the, the core principles behind this project were really motivated um, in terms of the priority. And that's really what was identified in that 2020 Capital Reserve study. The priority was life safety, um, health safety, as well as, um, you know, upgrading obsolete systems. Those were the key priorities. This is the busiest year for um, capital maintenance that we have in the next 20 years. Um, we've got, you know, like I said, $1.8 million worth of work that we're doing here, which in the scheme of things for a public building is, is not a lot, but the scope of it was all very important and is going to serve us for years to come. I mean, upgrading your fire alarm system, security systems, access control and whatnot, along with all the electrical, um, we've really gotten an amazing bang for the buck here. And I think there's a lot for us to be proud of. It's hard to get excited about things like this that you can't really see. Um, it's not like books that are on the shelf. Um, but that's what makes our building uh, safe and accessible and allows us to keep it open and fully functional. So we're, we do feel really confident with the results here. And kudos to our staff um, who have weathered the storm. Um, there's been a lot of activity that's been going on through the building uh, throughout this whole process. And our facilities team has really taken very good care of us, just as much as um, all the contractors have been really a joy to work with. And as I said before, I, I really could not have done this without our construction manager. Shales McDud has been an, an absolutely amazing partner, as you may recall. They, uh, Jason Perkunas was also our construction manager on the outdoor renovation project in 2019. And you know they really have our best interest in mind. I, I really think that they've done a spectacular job. So kudos to the board for recognizing that a construction manager is a, a really great way to get uh, the project accomplished and advocate for our team. So thank you all for that. I, I just wanna say, I, I think it's awesome that when the walls were open, that they actually looked and for opportunities to looking ahead. You know, I, I, you know, saving a buck now for spending ten later just doesn't make any sense. And I, and you're still under budget. So yes. I think that was a great uh, call. And and again, with a good contractor, rec having them recognize that opportunity. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. All right. Any <laughs> other questions or comments about construction? No. Okay. Well, I don't know how you can top that, but there's always more. Um, <laughs> so your director's report. Anthony, sure. Please. Thank you. All right. So um, <clears throat> I will certainly give you opportunity to, to pull out any items in here that you want to discuss, but I, I, there are a few that I've highlighted that I want to share. Um, so Andrea discussed the school library cards. That was one of the first items under the strategic plan that I wanted to make sure I, I shared with you all. Um, she, uh, Andrea also touched in her report about um, the staff's um, attention to equity, diversity, and inclusion when evaluating our collections. And I wanted to also reinforce that our adult services department actually devoted a, a bit of time during the, cl the closure to discuss their plans for how they're going to continue to maintain the collections, to select materials, to promote them, to merchandise them, and to make sure that we're maintaining um, and uh, promoting even on the website through those book rivers, um, some of the items that can sometimes fall through the cracks um, uh, and those that we wanna help to represent. So I'm really impressed with what Adult Services is also doing um, with our EDI initiatives regarding the collection. Um, speaking of the collection, 
Um, as I mentioned earlier with the construction project, uh, that drain tile installation on the lower level did disrupt um, our nonfiction collection for a while. Um, kudos to, to Patsy Devono and, and Mary Dorman for getting the, all the cookbooks back on the shelves down on the lower levels. It was a big shift to move all those and schlep them back into their location. Um, but they somehow were able to miraculously do that in a way that allowed us to merchandise those collections even a little bit more and to kind of spread them out. So the opportunity to, to shift it actually afforded us a chance to, to take a, a fresh look at it and to distribute those materials a little bit more evenly across the walls. So it actually looks really sharp down there. So um, they've done a lot of shifting and they're actually continuing to shift. One of our new projects on the lower level um, is uh, right outside of Books Down Under. Uh, immediately to the left of that, that corner um, is where the nonfiction collection begins. That's where the zeros are. And um, we have moved the zeros down, I don't know if it's like 30 shelves or so, so that it starts um, on the other side of the aisle from, from where BDU is, um, immediately to the right of that. And uh, that corner is now opened up for some new shelving that we're going to install here in October, which will be um, purposed for our oversized collection, our coffee table books, if you will, which are currently stored on the mezzanine and are the only collection that remains on the mezzanine. So we're going to reunify all of those uh, books uh, that are kind of singled out and kind of odd, um, are now going to get a very fresh look down in a high profile area. And that will also give us an opportunity to merchandise them, perhaps even on coffee tables down on the lower level, um, so that folks can, can be aware of what we have in that really cool collection and to be encouraged to take them out. So watch that space. It will be um, coming here shortly in October. Um, and also speaking of collections, kudos to the technical services department. Oh my word. Um, they have really done an awful lot of work here in the last year. Um, and uh, they've done, they've completed an, a remarkable amount of work here, even um, in the wake of this, uh, um, this closure. Um, so even not being in the building, they were able to do a lot of database cleanup work, things that have been on the back burner for them. Um, they did a lot of a lot of maintenance. You can see the details of that in my report there. Um, and they've also been adding back uh, right now. They've got a backlog of materials because our selectors were really busy during that closure um, with buying a lot of new material. And so we've received all of that new, new material now, and they're in the process of preparing it for circulation. Um, so they're doing a real bang up job. And uh, that is also I think remarkable in the fact that they've been short staffed and we're, we're finally getting them back up to full staff. So I'm excited about that for our TS team. Um, I wanted to share an update with you all about our automated material handling system, which is one of the remaining pieces of the RFID project. So while we have tagged the entire collection, there are a couple steps that remain for the completion of uh, the RFID project. So you may recall that we've got the, the, the collections completely tagged. We've got the self-checkout station scattered throughout the building. Our circulation department is testing the, the, uh, the RFID tag system to make sure that it's working at the circulation desk so that when the time is right, we can light this thing up and allow the public to take advantage of all those self-checkout stations um, for their ease of use. Uh, so right now patrons are finding barcodes on those items, but in the very near future, they'll be able to simply place those items flat on that bed and um, they'll automatically be checked out. Uh, one of the remaining pieces that's, that's with that is a procedure that relates to our hold material. As you know, we do have a lot of uh, patrons who take advantage of hold th throughout the system and not every library has an RFID system like Wilmette. So um, what we're looking at evaluating is how we can um, add a removable target for the items that we receive from other libraries to help facilitate checkout at the self-checkout stations because a good number of our patrons love that service, but that could be a confusing thing when you get an item from another library. So we're trying to take all the mystery out of that and make it simple. And to do that takes a little bit work on our end to, uh, to make that happen. So that's one of, the, one of the hurdles that we need to overcome before we can launch this to the public. What we were thinking is that we were gonna launch it all at the same time when the AMH arrives, the Automated Material Handling System. Unfortunately, the AMH missed the boat, quite literally. Um, it is manufactured in Germany and um, it was supposed to come over, I guess, a couple weeks ago. And um, for some reason or another, Biblioteca didn't really give me the details, but it missed the boat. So the next boat that comes out um, is not gonna have it arriving here until um, what looks to be more like November now. 
Um, so bummer, um, Bibliotheca knows that we're not happy about that, um, but there's really nothing that we can do at this point um, except prepare. So um, that is what staff is doing. Um, that space uh, where the AMH is gonna go, which is um, the space we've been using this last year for parking lot pickup is actually under renovation. Uh, this is another one of those change orders that we had because we knew the AMH was coming. Um, we did take this opportunity to do a few more tweaks and changes and to prepare that space for that equipment to arrive. So that allows this finished work to be completed and also allows the staff to do a little bit more configuration and training on the AMH before it arrives so that we're better prepared to anticipate it when it gets here. So bummer, but it's still coming. So we're excited about that. Um, the inventory wands is the other thing that still remains. And um, I, I don't know what the deal is with that. Hopefully we get that equipment here soon too. Um, I also want to give kudos to the circulation department who did a remarkable job both preparing staff and the public for the closure. Um, they're largely responsible for preparing all of the, uh, the, the way that we communicated about our holds and setting up all the communications and systems um, to ensure that that was a seamless process for our patrons. And I did not receive any complaints about that. I think um, based upon uh, the performance of, um, of our circulation trends over the course of the last month, I think our patrons got it, they understood. Some of them had their holds go to other libraries, but I would say the majority of them elected to pause their holds and receive them here at Wilmette Library because when we reopened, those hold shelves were packed. Um, and then patrons flocked in and uh, came and collected their items. So they must not have minded too much having to wait an extra couple of weeks to get their material if there were things in transit. So. Um, kudos to the CERC team who did a fantastic job of preparing us, but also digging out um, that, like I said, that Tuesday that we were doing all of our prep work in the building, they worked like crazy and were able to check in. I, I can't remember what the total was now. It was like 50 some bins of material that was returned on that first day back. And then we had a bunch more that arrived later that week. They sailed through all of that, got those materials processed. The shelving team was right on the heels with with carts to get them back on the shelves to, um, to get everything back in operation. Um, we've got a really remarkable team. Um, and I also wanted to point out in my report, there's a graphic um, that shows our patron engagement. So there's a pie chart um, that, that reflects that our patron engagement is actually really quite remarkable. Um, three quarters of our card holders have used the library since the pandemic started. So that's, kind of amazing to see that that high level of engagement despite a lot of hurdles and obstacles to being able to get access to equip, uh, to our resources. Um, so to me that reflects that we're doing things that that patrons um, that patrons can can use our services can take advantage of them but also that they're repeat customers that they're coming back that they're finding the things that they're looking for. Um, over 60 percent of our users have used the library in the last six months. So I think that's really remarkable. Uh, and as a credit to our team. Um, I also wanted to comment that our adult services staff has, has continued to host a lot of engaging author events and has done um, several of those recently. And we've got more plans to do that here this summer or fall rather, it's fall now. Um, so um, stay tuned for more information about our, our author events this fall. Um, I think that's kind of what I wanted to highlight from my report. Um, do you all have any questions or comments from from what was in my report. I have one question I meant to ask you in an email. What audiobook has 39 CDs? <laughs> Do you know? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, that's unbelievable. Yeah, there, there's some long ones out there. And that, that's probably why some people are electing for the digital formats or the playaways is they don't have to change discs as much. Yeah. But we still have a lot of patrons that love their discs. So yeah. yeah. All right, just was curious. Yeah. Any, anyone else with any questions or comments? I have another question. Sure. I mentioned in there is that you're gonna have flu shots sometime in September. Did you, is it available to the public or just the staff? Is it a? This is just for staff. Yeah, we haven't done a flu, flu shot clinic for the public, but I will say that we coordinate our flu shots for staff through the Walgreens on Green Bay Road, so. I'm not endorsing Walgreens, but they've done a great job for us here. And I know that's a local place you can go. All right. Um, if, if nothing not, else, thank you. If, then Anyone I'll turn else? it over. 
Well, Anthony, it's 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 astounding, and I just um, I again I I'm trying to think of other ways, not me, but I know it's it doesn't always happen. Is for you to toot your horn and let the community know just the overwhelming physical and um, what's inside and outside and between. I mean, just updating the Wi-Fi, I think people um, need to know that. So I hope your team also does not um, does not get shy. And we need to shout it from this, the new roof <laughs> that um, so much has gone on and uh, money well were spent. And I think sometimes people um, don't always take that into consideration. So Thank whatever... You, um, I will take that it. under consideration and, and yeah. find ways that we can can communicate that. Thank you, Joan. Please do. Great. Well, thank you so much. And again, kudos to the entire team. I know some of them are on here and um, you're very complimentary. And I know the board also has a lot of good and I, I do have one other point. Respect for them. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thanks. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, there is, I think it bears note um, that I should mention that this is a very unusual year for the library in terms of our, our staffing. Um, there's, I didn't, I didn't comment on the HR portion of my report, and I just want to take a moment to, to comment on um, on Mike's report um, because I think it's really important that I that I touch on this. Um, we have had some turnover this year. Um, like I said, a lot of this was motivated by retirements that you know were inspired by the pandemic and so on. Um, but we have had some turnover, and recruitment is a challenge across the entire um, mm -hmm. workforce right now. Not not just in libraries, but across across all, all, all industries. Um, so we do have some vacancies and we are seeing some new faces on our team. And I would encourage you when you come in the library, if you see some faces that you haven't seen before to introduce yourself as a trustee. Um, the, our new trustee page on the website will feature your photos. And I appreciate you all coming in to have your pictures taken to, uh, to be up there. That's a great way to, uh, to show yourself as elected officials. But I would encourage you to come in as well and to, and to, to get to know the team and to see the staff um, because we do have some new faces. And we are going to be doing some continued recruitment. There are some vacancies that um, we haven't even posted yet. So if you know some folks that you think would be well suited for um, a wor work in the library, by all means, um, certainly point them in our direction. The other point I wanted to make was a major uh, project that we completed here this month. This was a miss. Uh, I want to make sure I include a note of this here. It is in my report, um, but um, we did complete a project here with um, HR Source. So um, back in 2018, the library engaged with HR Source, which was then known as Management Association, to complete a comprehensive study of all of our job descriptions and to do a comparative analysis of our compensation structure um, using five industry reports that they've done for this area to compare our compensation with other libraries, with other nonprofits. And now this year, um, when we've completed this report again for the second time here three years later, we've also included the for-profit um, private sector. Uh, there are a number of jobs in libraries that aren't just for libraries anymore. We're not just librarians. We've got graphic artists, we've got security monitors, we've got custodial staff, we've got professionals um, who work across industries, um, not just in libraries. And so we wanted to benchmark all of our positions against what the market rates are currently, and also combine our efforts with trying to get to minimum wage at $15 by our mandated date of 2025, but we saw an opportunity this year to escalate that. And so we did take those steps recently uh, to make those changes when we received that report that was completed um, in an effort to try to uh, improve compensation to be competitive uh, as part of our recruitment efforts. Uh, it is a challenging time right now for, for libraries and hiring, and uh, we definitely wanted to take advantage of this opportunity um, to improve our, our market structure and to get the compensation aligned for where it needs to be. So I wanted to bring note to that. It's in Mike's report at the end of the director's report. And um, you know, if you, if you wanna chat with me about that in the future, by all means, we can, we can get into that too. But thank you for giving me that extra moment to, to give credence to that. I think that's important. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And I think um, everyone knows that wherever you go, you see a help wanted sign. And uh, we think the live working at the library would be phenomenal and um, we'll be happy to spread the word. I just wanna make note what I noticed in your report on page 17 is a number of the new names of um, new staff. And I, I really 
I'm glad that you've identified who they are and we'll look for them and um, welcome them and say hello. So thank you for identifying that. Um, moving forward then, thank you so much, Anthony. Um, we'll just briefly say that there's really no updates on um, ILA or rails at this time. And um, information items, um, no communication um, comments um, have come in of, of note. And just as you see the announcements, um, our finance committee meeting will be um, scheduled for Tuesday, October 5th by a Zoom at 11 o'clock. And the um, ILA conference is information as, as noted. Um, any new business or old business? All right. Then um, is there a motion to adjourn? And it is 7.53. I will motion we adjourn at 7.53. Excellent. Thank you. Second? I mean, we I don't need a it. second, but oh. we'll take it just in case. <laughs> I second. Thank you, Trustee Summer. And we don't need a voice vote. All we need is all those in favor, raise your hand. Adjourn. Any opposed? Great. 7.54, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, Joe. Good thank you. Everyone. Good to have bye you bye. back, Stuart. Thank you. I'm Welcome great to be here. So thank you. Uh, yeah. We well, need new changes of scenery, background scenery. I know you'll keep <laughs> us guessing. I will, yes. <laughs>